Good morning. Welcome to Lee's Catfish. I'm Jeff and we're going to show you a day of seining here. This is a seine reel here that uh, the net is rolled up on and we go all the way around. We'll show you where we zip on a sock and run the fish into there and we'll be loading later on today and in the morning. So enjoy the day. All right, this sock that they're pulling off is what they put the fish in. It's got a bottom and a top except for the very front where they dip them out. And this is a little bit of a different sock. It's what we call a panel sock. We use it for a hybrid catfish. It uh, was developed so that it could grade the smaller fish out. It, it has PVC bars so that the fish can either get out or not get out. The hybrid catfish have a smaller head and a bigger body and so it does not work well to grade them through a regular net. And so we use a, a smaller hold net so they don't grade through the net and use these panels to grade them. That way we can go through and just take the bigger end off and continue to raise the smaller ones. Out right by the boat there is the tunnel. That bubble out there is, is what we call the tunnel. It has a big buggy zipper on it and the sock has a zipper and they will zip that sock to the tunnel. That's how they run the fish up in there. Alright, we see the little floating thing right on this side of the boat. That is what we, that's our oxygen buoy and that measures the oxygen in this pond every 15 minutes. And then it, it turns on the electric aerators as needed and it, it sends the message back to the house and tells us what the, we have a computer at the house and at the office that tells us what the oxygen is. And if, if the electrics do not hold it and it goes on down, then we have to put like a diesel aerator in here in order to uh, keep the oxygen up where it needs to be. But they'll just pick the seine over the top of this buoy and we'll keep on seining on down through here. Pond is around maximum about seven feet and down to about five feet in the corner. We try to have a shallower corner so that when we pull the the fish up it's not so deep and what these men are doing here they're what we call riding a mud line they uh, stand on that bottom line and hold the top to help it conform to the bank better otherwise that mud line would stay up a long way out there and the fish would just come underneath but they ride down through there and hold that down to to keep the fish on the other side of the net we stock around 150,000 little fingerling and we do that every spring and then we go through it about every three months or so and take the top end off and grade them. Grading, it's sorting for size and so it's holding the big fish and letting the little fish escape back into the pond. We seen this last winter. In the winter time, catfish are inactive. They are a cold-blooded species, and so in the winter time, their metabolism goes down. We don't feed them; they don't grow. But then, as the water warms up, when the water hits 70, it really starts happening. At 50, they won't hardly eat. At 60, they'll eat some. At 70 we'll be feeding every other day and the water's running about 85 right now so we're feeding every day a couple times a day but uh, I think we pulled a little over a hundred thousand pounds out of here last time we seen this they were eating real good this spring and about a month ago we had some disease that we lost a whack of fish out of here I would just guess 20 30 thousand pounds they're eating real good right now. They eat between three and 4,000 pounds of feed a day. And just based on the feed we put in and the way I see them feeding from the feed truck, I would guess we're gonna pull somewhere between 40, 50,000 pounds out that will stay in the sock. There'll probably be 
more than that that will pull up, but then they'll grade out, the smaller ones will grade out through the bars. If you'll notice on the front of the boat is a, what we call a net catcher. And what he's doing right now is he's, is he's pushing on the net a little bit. What happens, the mud line will bury into the mud and just get worse and worse and worse and get where you can't pull it and they can't hold the ends down. And so they take the boat with that net catcher and wherever it's kind of hanging up, they take and push the top. They don't want to push too much or else they'll bring it all up and the fish will go out. But what they're trying to do is just dump mud that has caught in the bottom of the net and hasn't went through the same. And so that's what that uh, bar, that catcher is on the front of the boat. Just a little explanation on this little pump. It's just a little bit like getting a lot of people in a room and there's no air moving. When you pull all these fish up in one spot, they run out of oxygen. And so we're not really making oxygen with this much, but we're moving the water through there. It's kind of like turning the ceiling fan on in a room. And that's why we run this pump. And also, when you pull up with the seine, you end up pulling mud up and get mud in their gills is it makes it where they can't process the oxygen they can choke from the mud and so that's the other thing that moving some water does it helps to to get that mud washed on out of here to keep good fresh water to the fish the uh we have a computer here with the oxygen system for the farm you can see each each uh pond has a value there there's like 24 ponds and it says what the oxygen is on each each pond currently and so it takes a reading every 15 minutes and sends that message back here to the office and you see at this time of the day some of them are real high from the uh, algae making good oxygen and they're super saturated we got a 22 right here also got some that are a little low for this time of the day. There we have a 4.6, which, uh, but there's quite a few fish in that pond and I fed quite a bit of feed in there today. And our cell ponds have two buoys in it. And that's why we have two uh, readings there. But you can also see the temperature of the water here. It's like 87 degrees. This one's 87.8. Also here at the office, we put in a surveillance camera for being able to look at the birds, that we have issues with birds eating the fish, herons, egrets, pelicans, comrades, and uh, to try to stay on top of that, we installed cameras. And
what we have here is a cell pond we have the pond divided 85 percent outside the cell 15 percent in the cell the fish are captive in this little part and a lot of the oxygen demand on a pond is the biomass in the water rather than the fish theirself. In other words, when we feed, feed in there, there's algae, biomass. During the day when the sun is shining, algae creates oxygen through photosynthesis. And so by doing this cell pond system, we don't have to aerate what's outside of the fish zone. And so at night, we turn this paddle off and that out there can go to zero. And it's a lot easier to keep the, the oxygen up for the fish here in this small area. But the downside of it, it's a little like a chicken house if the power goes off and you don't have aeration, you get in trouble really fast because there's a lot of, there's a high fish density in this. And so that's why we put in generators for the cell ponds that crank automatically if the power goes off so that it, it can go ahead and run these electric aerators. But we have this big paddle that's made up at the welding shop. It's 16 feet in diameter, and it's a slow-moving water mover. It doesn't oxygenate, but it rather moves the water from the outside through these box culverts or screens here at the box culverts. And that'll move about 25,000 gallons a minute. And if you look over here, you can see this next pond that we are working on. Those are the box culverts. We have to put the levees up to it. Uh, but there you can see the box culverts as it is before the dirt work is done. But kind of give you a little picture of a cell pond. And we've been able to have a higher production rate with this and another thing that's nice it puts all the electric on this side we feed on this side and the fish when you feed you can about throw the feed on top of the fish they're not off on the other side of the pond or something so that's why we like these How many pounds again is this? Oh yeah. Basically eight thousand pounds. One thing that we do for feed records, we have this tablet that has a spreadsheet on it. And when I feed, I enter in how much I feed for that day. And that keeps a running total across here. And we have our week total and then our pre-total from the week before. And then the grand total. And uh, so I can look here and see how many pounds of feed we fed since we last seen this. What I usually do after we seen, I zero out this feed weight. And the reason the feed weight is important to us is we can't see the fish like you can a pig or a cow. 
uh, to a, a good where you can really tell where you're at and so basically we we plan on a two to one feed conversion and so if we have a hundred thousand pounds of feed in a pond then we know there should be fifty thousand pounds of fish ready for market All right, what we're doing here is we're catching a sample. Fish take on the taste of their environment. And so if there's the wrong algae in the water, it tastes like algae. Or if they've been in the bottom and mud, it can uh, taste like mud. And so, but if everything is, the water's good, it uh, is when the fish are what we call on flavor. And so, before we can sell the fish, before they'll come harvest it, we have to take samples into the plant and they taste it for flavor and say if it's okay or not okay. And so the fish we got here is nice, nice market fish for fillets, probably about a pound and a half fish makes a nice size fillet. We put it on ice right away so that it'll be cool to till it gets to the plant. So that's ready to go out to the plant to be checked for flavor. Hi, right, welcome to Superior Catfish. This is where our fish get sold and this is their front desk where people can come in and buy retail. Most of it goes out wholesale out the back but uh, fish are short and things are a little empty there right now. But whenever we bring samples in, we put them in these, these empty totes right here and then they take them back and sample them at 10 o'clock. Here you can see the gearbox. This is a final drive off of an 8820 John Deere combine. See the paddle fastens like where the wheel would fasten. And that's a 13 to one ratio. And then we direct drive it to a 51 to one ratio. And then it's just a regular standard 1700 RPM motor and we have a VFD variable frequency drive that we can set the speed and but it also starts slow it takes about five minutes to get up the speed so that it don't twist things mm -hmm. off this is what keeps the fish on that side when we pour the concrete we leave a track in the wall there so it, it don't rot out it's just a void in the wall there for the for the screen to drop in and there's a keyway in the bottom. <laughs> 